He's clearly a killing machine, yet he has the heart of a child. Despite his immense strength, he's allergic to nuts, and he's never been heard speaking. The black mask that envelopes him makes him even more mysterious, forever concealing his joy and sorrow. He often spaces out during meetings, but he never escapes Homelander's notice. He never flatters Homelander, yet no one can rival his place in Homelander's heart. Black Noir has indeed never disappointed Homelander, he always completes his missions with excellence, making him Homelander's sole reliance. But this time is different, he skillfully pulls out a dagger and suddenly stabs his own arm, facing the mighty soldier boy. Black Noir's only thought is to flee. Black Noir escapes to an abandoned bar. He looks at the animal murals on the wall, then opens a can and pours it into a long blackened dish. As Black Noir sits down, the animals on the wall come to life and step down. It turns out they are Black Noir's friends. Whenever he encounters troubles he can't solve, he hides and communicates with these animals. A little squirrel steps out from behind a curtain and immediately sees through Black Noir's troubles. To help Black Noir regain his confidence, the squirrel starts recounting their shared experiences of hardship. Together, they overcame the embarrassment of teenage morning tents. They overcame the psychological trauma of witnessing a massacre. This time would be no different. The other animals chime in to encourage Black Noir. But Black Noir is furious after hearing them. He deliberately keeps his distance, believing they don't understand his fear. However, the squirrel doesn't give up. It and the other animals carefully prepare a performance for Black Noir. Reenacting past events, the eagle plays soldier boy, who beats up the little pig gunpowder for no reason, just to amuse himself. The teammates can only watch, too angry to speak. Only Black Noir steps forward to plead for gunpowder, but he not only fails to persuade soldier boy but also gets a severe beating. No matter how much Black Noir begs, it's useless. Soldier boy becomes even more furious when Black Noir tries to escape. His blows becoming heavier, Soldier Boy wanted to make an example out of him, ensuring that no one would dare to resist his tyranny. And this was just the beginning. By 1984, things got worse. Black Noir could no longer endure Soldier Boy's abuse. When Stan proposed eliminating Soldier Boy, Black Noir immediately accepted. He just didn't understand why they had to act now. Stan explained that they already had a replacement, though still a child. He would definitely grow stronger than Soldier Boy in the future. So they took action on the day the enemy launched their attack. The TNT twins struck first, with Mindstorm and Black Noir coordinating from the middle. Unfortunately, Soldier Boy was too strong, and even their combined efforts couldn't hold him down. Only Black Noir had any fight left in him, but he was no match for Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy pinned him against the red hot tank, burning half his face. Yet Soldier Boy still didn't stop, he lifted his shield made from pure adamantium, and brutally smashed it down on Black Noir's head, blow after blow, until Black Noir's face was unrecognizable. His brains scattered on the ground, but his resilience bought time for his teammates. Mindstorm used his powers to disrupt Soldier Boy's mind, and Crimson Countess took the opportunity to inject Soldier Boy with an unknown substance. Finally, they subdued Soldier Boy. Though the performance ended, Black Noir's story continued, once dreaming of making a name for himself. He now became a hideous monster who couldn't speak, he had to hide behind his mask. Only these animals knew how sensitive and fearful he was beneath his cold exterior. The animals encouraged him to be brave. Bravery is not the absence of fear, but facing it and moving forward despite it. Hearing the squirrel's words, Black Noir regained his confidence. Perhaps it was time to end this, but trying to take down Soldier Boy alone was a fool's dream. So he planned to team up with Homelander. Homelander took the note without making any promises, nor did he blame Black Noir for leaving without notice. Instead, he gave him a big hug. Black Noir felt overjoyed, thinking the clouds had finally parted. Not realizing this was the beginning of his tragedy, Black Noir meticulously sharpened his blade preparing to deliver a fatal blow to Soldier Boy at the crucial moment. But Homelander told him, even if you sharpen it for a thousand years, it won't hurt Soldier Boy. Black Noir knew this, but it was the only way he could momentarily forget his fear. Homelander asked him what kind of person Soldier Boy was. Black Noir told him, he was very bad. But no matter how much Black Noir emphasized, Homelander refused to believe it. And who would want to admit that their father was a bad person? Homelander told Black Noir that Soldier Boy was his father, but Black Noir remained surprisingly calm, even writing he must be killed on a piece of paper. This, too, could not help arousing Homelander's suspicions, and he asked tentatively, Did you know that I had a father out there? Black Noir knew Homelander could see through the subtle expressions under his mask, 
So he nodded. In that moment, Homelander was shattered. He wished Black Noir could lie to him. Just once, holding back immense sorrow, Homelander punched through Black Noir's body, then walked out of the conference room in despair, leaving Black Noir barely clinging to life. In his final moments, Black Noir saw his animal friends once again, the animals, with tears in their eyes, bid Black Noir a final farewell. Afterwards, Homelander showed Black Noir's mask to the team, and the atmosphere became instantly somber. Homelander always treated them as family since he never had one, but their reactions deeply disappointed him. One by one, Homelander unveiled their cover-ups. He mocked the Deep for always fooling around with octopuses. He forced Ashley to remove her wig. He blamed A-Train for killing his own kind. A-Train glanced at Black Noir's helmet, thinking, aren't you the same? To Homelander, Black Noir was more valuable than all of them combined. If he could kill Black Noir, he could kill them too. Before leaving, Homelander gave the Deep a secret mission. The Deep was startled at first. That sort of treason. But when he saw Homelander's fierce eyes, he quickly changed his tone. He didn't want to end up like Black Noir. The Deep's target was Bishop, a strong contender for the next president. At this moment, Bishop had no idea that danger was looming over him. After a fierce struggle, he went still. The purpose was clear. Meanwhile, the boys were in increasingly dire straits. Billy and Imam were fighting their own battles. Kimiko had lost her powers, and danger was closing in on Frenchie. Frenchie left and never returned. Kimiko waited all night until morning, but there was still no news from Frenchie. Kimiko began to doubt herself. Are you mad at me, my love, because of that kiss? I'm sorry, it won't happen again. She wrote and deleted messages. Over and over, after some thought, she finally came up with a reason for a date. Let's watch Singin' in the Rain together someday. But sending the message didn't ease her anxiety. In despair, Kimiko opened her third ice cream. What she didn't know was that without this ice cream, she would regret it for life. Seeing a happy family outside the window, Kimiko smiled bitterly. If only she had a family. Just then, a man suddenly sprang up behind her and held her tightly. Kimiko, in a moment of desperation, bit down hard but was knocked out by a punch. When Kimiko woke up, she found her hands tied. Next to her was Frenchie's former partner, Sherry. Before Kimiko could take in her surroundings, a loud banging at the door caught her attention. Two strong men dragged Frenchie into the warehouse, then locked him to a metal frame with a collar. Throwing in a couple of punches for good measure, Kimiko's heart ached at the sight. The scars on Frenchie's body were shocking, each one representing a painful experience. Three gunshot wounds on his back from when he helped little Nina kill someone. The tree bark-like scars on his knees were from when, at 14, he broke a glass by accident, and his father made him kneel on the shattered pieces. It was then that Kimiko realized Frenchie had a tragic childhood just like hers. This time, Frenchie refused to kill for little Nina because of Kimiko and he was about to face little Nina's punishment. The so-called punishment was that Frenchie had to choose between Kimiko and Sherry. One would live, the other would die. Kimiko glared fiercely at little Nina while using the ice cream stick to pick her handcuffs. At the critical moment, Kimiko finally broke free from the handcuffs. She dodged a bullet and used the handcuffs to take down one of the goons. Little Nina was no longer arrogant. Yevgeny drew his gun and fired multiple shots at the two on the ground, stopping only when his ammo was spent. Seeing no movement, Yevgeny kicked away the body on top. Kimiko suddenly opened her eyes and bit hard into Yevgeny's calf. Yevgeny, in pain, kicked Kimiko and began to strangle her, just as he was about to kill her. Kimiko twisted and broke his fingers. Kimiko finally caught her breath. Seeing this, little Nina immediately tried to shoot them with her handgun. Sherry suddenly burst out and knocked down little Nina, but she was also knocked out by Yevgeny. Kimiko clearly wouldn't run away as Frenchie told her, because if she did, it would be like sending Frenchie to his death. But without her powers, she was no match for Yevgeny. Yevgeny dragged Kimiko over and punched her in the face. Yevgeny gripped Kimiko's neck with his left hand and punched her unhealed wounds with his right. Each punch was harder than the last. Kimiko's clothes were soaked in blood, but Yevgeny didn't intend to stop. At that moment, Kimiko saw a scattered steel nail. She grabbed it and drove it through Yevgeny's thigh. This series of events drove Kimiko to lose her sanity. She vented her emotions on Yevgeny, stabbing him repeatedly. Her movements grew faster, and blood splattered all over Kimiko's face. At this moment, she seemed like a demon from hell. It was only when Yevgeny was full of holes that Kimiko regained her senses, leaving tears of frustration in her eyes. Little Nina took advantage of the chaos to escape. Afterward, 
Frenchie tenderly wiped Kimiko's wounds. Although it was all over, Kimiko couldn't feel happy. She had always thought that her superpowers made her a monster, but today she realized that she was a monster at her core. This ordeal made Frenchie understand one thing. Since they couldn't escape their fate, they might as well stop running. He took Kimiko to Mim's house to start investigating ways to deal with Soldier Boy. Frenchie immediately noticed that the gas in the video wasn't fluorine, what it was exactly still needed to be verified. But Frenchie truly was a genius. In the time it took to pour a glass of water, he figured out the problem. The white smoke looks like gas, but it's a vapor, a nerve agent unique to Russia. A normal person would suffer organ failure and die a painful death from just a touch. But for Soldier Boy, it would only make him take a nap. Kimiko also understood one thing. She wanted to dance with Frenchie first before explaining. With soothing music playing, Kimiko gently caressed Frenchie's shoulders. When she had her powers, she couldn't feel Frenchie's arms. It felt more like soft straw. Kimiko wanted to feel them one last time because she was ready to regain her powers. Frenchie didn't understand why she wanted to do this. Kimiko didn't explain. Instead, she showed Frenchie a letter she had written in advance. She hadn't had a choice when she had her powers before. Now she wanted to use them for good. If not for that ice cream, she might have lost Frenchie forever today. In Kimiko's heart, she already considered Frenchie family. This time, she wanted to fight for her family. So she asked Starlight to steal the compound V for her. Starlight successfully infiltrated the lab and stole a vial of the compound. Just as she was about to leave, she saw something shocking. It was the side effects of V24. Starlight didn't dare delay any longer and immediately headed for the exit. But at the elevator, she ran into Homelander. Homelander demanded that Starlight go to the media and retract her previous statements. But this time, Starlight did not compromise and said she was no longer afraid of him. On the night he killed Supersonic, she saw how small he truly was. I remember what I told you would happen to Huey. You walk. That's next. What Homelander never expected was that Starlight pulled out a phone that was live streaming. She had anticipated that coming here wouldn't escape Homelander's notice, so she had prepared a backup plan. Homelander immediately put on a different face. Starlight narrowly escaped and successfully brought the compound back. Before injecting the compound, Kimiko hugged Frenchie tightly, then Frenchie injected the compound into her. The intense pain instantly swept through Kimiko's body. After what seemed like an eternity, she gradually calmed down. Her wounds began to heal at a visible rate. She finally transformed from the weak woman she had become back into the fearsome Kimiko once more. He was clearly a weakling who couldn't even open a can. Yet he became someone even superheroes feared. He killed Translucent. He coerced Popclaw. He blackmailed Stretchy. He single-handedly outsmarted A-Train. He rescued his teammates alone. He has survived not just because of his exceptional intelligence, but also because of the resilience deep in his bones. Even Billy couldn't help but see Huey in a new light. The person he once looked down upon the most had now become the one who stood by him until the end. But Billy had led Huey down a path of no return. Though they used the superpowers from V24 to resolve crisis after crisis, the side effects were becoming increasingly frequent. At first, they vomited. Then their ears started bleeding black blood. Billy realized the severity of the problem and began to ponder deeply. Billy wondered if it had been a mistake from the start to have Huey follow him. And just then, Starlight called to confirm his suspicions. The side effects of V24 are lethal. The first dose rapidly induces cancer. The second causes cortical atrophy. And the third accelerates the growth of cancer cells. Three to five doses are enough to be fatal. When the news reached Billy, it was like a bolt from the blue. He had already injected five doses, and Huey had taken four. They were both on the brink of death. After hanging up, Billy wrestled with himself repeatedly. If he told Huey, teaming up with Soldier Boy still might not be enough to defeat Homelander. If he didn't say anything, what would happen to his brother-in-arm's life? He hesitated for a long time but finally made a decision. It's the Tim V. What about it? We've got to swing by the office and get some more. But when the words were on the tip of his tongue, he swallowed them back. Billy's words always seemed insincere. Huey reminded him too much of his late brother. If Billy told Huey the truth, Huey would definitely stop him from continuing to inject V24. But the revenge for his wife had to be carried out. So Billy had no choice but to use this last resort. After knocking Huey out, Billy and Soldier Boy set out on their path of revenge. Billy even lied to Soldier Boy, saying that Huey had fled the battle. Soldier Boy questioned Billy on how they would get close to Black Noir without Huey. 
Billy spoke while observing Soldier Boy's reaction through the rearview mirror. Fortunately, Soldier Boy did not become suspicious, and Billy was relieved. Meanwhile, Huey woke up, unable to understand why Billy had abandoned him, but Starlight's words made everything clear to Huey. That temp V is fatal. If you shot up anymore, you'd probably be dead right Starlight angrily called Billy a bastard for not telling Huey such important information, but after hearing it, Huey laughed. Even at his lowest, Billy still did everything he could to protect him, but this time, Huey was going to pull Billy out of the abyss. The problem is, now they know Soldier Boy is Homelander's father. If the two joined forces, even if Billy had ten lives, it wouldn't be enough to withstand them. Moreover, there were thousands of lives in Vought Tower. If Soldier Boy unleashed his full power, everyone would perish. The best solution now was to take down Soldier Boy before they found Homelander. So, they began to execute their plan. Starlight notified Vought Tower in advance to evacuate the crowd. Frenchie turned the only neurotoxin that could control Soldier Boy into a perfume as a precaution. Queen Maeve knocked on the office door to attract Billy's attention. M. M. hid in a blind spot and took the opportunity to point a gun at Billy, threatening him to reveal Soldier Boy's location. Huey then spoke to Billy about the dangers, saying that if they didn't stop Soldier Boy, thousands of people would die. But Billy told him they weren't storming some kindergarten. But the damn Vought Tower. Frenchie reminded him that Becca also used to work at Vought Tower. And Billy immediately told him to shut up. But this time Frenchie didn't listen to Billy. All his life, Frenchie had been a dog at someone's beck and call. First, it was his father holding the leash. Then little Nina. And now Billy, he was fed up with this kind of life. Frenchie's rebellion also earned Kimiko's admiration. Huey continued to reason with Billy. Huey's words indeed had an effect on Billy, but they had overlooked one person. Suddenly, Queen Maeve snatched the neurotoxin and threw it out the window, also disabling Mum's gun. In that room, besides Billy, the person who wanted Homelander dead the most was Queen Maeve. This series of actions caught Starlight off guard, and she immediately tried to attack Queen Maeve. With Soldier Boy joining the fray, Huey's side was quickly overpowered. Queen Maeve locked them in the vault. Before leaving, Billy deliberately cut the power to delay Starlight's time to break through the vault door. By the time they escaped the vault, Billy and the others were long gone, forcing them to rethink their plan. The most troubling issue was that without the neurotoxin, no one could restrain Soldier Boy. At this moment, Frenchie thought of a solution. He knew there was a lab nearby that might have the ingredients to make the toxin. Although Frenchie knew this mission was dangerous, there was no other option. So they split up. M. M. And Starlight went to buy time. Huey was responsible for evacuating the crowd. Before leaving, he discovered a forgotten vial of V24, which might come in handy at a critical moment. Meanwhile, Kimiko and Frenchie successfully infiltrated the lab. And Frenchie immediately got to work. Kimiko watched the approaching armed squad. She calmly put on her headphones and began dancing to a routine she had recently learned. She was completely immersed in the music. Even as bullets rained down on her, she neither flinched nor dodged. She grabbed scissors from the table and quickly took down the soldiers closest to Frenchie. Then she slid across the floor, knocking down one soldier, and seamlessly lunged at the last soldier, sending him to his death in rhythm with the music. Unexpectedly, there was a straggler aiming his gun at Frenchie. Kimiko quickly flew to his rescue, knocking the soldier's machine gun away just in time to save Frenchie. Kimiko picked up the gun and finished off the soldier, though Frenchie was shot in the leg. He didn't fail in his mission. He handed the neurotoxin to Kimiko and told her to go support the others. Billy and the other two found Homelander. Soldier Boy worried that Black Noir might launch a sneak attack. Homelander bluntly stated that he had already killed Black Noir because he had hidden Soldier Boy's existence. Homelander understood the pain of being betrayed by teammates. He hoped to join forces with Soldier Boy, believing that together as father and son, they would be unstoppable. Seeing this, Billy starts to brainwash Soldier Boy. Seeing Soldier Boy still unmoved, Homelander was prepared. He specifically brought his son Ryan along. Three generations gathered together, something Homelander had never dared to dream of. Soldier Boy was deeply moved. He regretted not raising Homelander himself, thinking that if he had, Homelander wouldn't have turned into a weakling who cried and sought attention all the time. You're a f***ing disappointment. Listening to Soldier Boy's sudden change of tone, Homelander finally sensed something was wrong, but it was too late. Soldier Boy grabbed Homelander by the throat. Billy and Queen Maeve took the opportunity to pin his arms, giving Soldier Boy time. Just as Soldier Boy's attack was about to be unleashed, 
A red laser beam knocked him back. The laser came from Ryan, but this completely enraged Soldier Boy, taking advantage of Ryan's momentary shock. Soldier Boy slammed him with his shield, sending him flying. Homelander quickly broke free and rushed to check on his son's condition, but Soldier Boy, in his rage, didn't care about sons or grandsons, he immediately charged up his attack to finish off both of them. At that moment, Homelander's focus was solely on his son, completely forgetting the danger behind him. Just then, Soldier Boy sensed a threat. Billy interrupted his charge. Soldier Boy faced off against him with his shield. Homelander, snapping back to reality, joined the fight, and together they pushed Soldier Boy back. This pair of mortal enemies showed a surprising unity in their effort to protect Ryan. Soldier Boy was left bewildered by Billy's attacks. Listening to Billy's words, He's my wife's son. Soldier Boy realized that Homelander had slept with Billy's wife and that Billy was trying to save this bastard child. Proving that Billy was also a weakling, the two began to brawl. On Homelander's side, his heart was hanging in his chest when he saw his son waking up. He was about to join the other fight but was intercepted by Queen Maeve. Homelander didn't want to get entangled with Queen Maeve, but she wouldn't let him go. Queen Maeve delivered a fierce kick to Homelander, followed by a powerful punch, but Homelander dodged it. Homelander took the opportunity to punch Queen Maeve. Queen Maeve wasn't one to back down. Her four months of intense combat training finally paid off today. After a few rounds, she managed to make Homelander bleed, which only fueled his anger. Homelander immediately unleashed his laser eyes, but to his shock, Queen Maeve took it head on. Not only did Homelander fail to gain the upper hand, but he was also knocked to the ground by Queen Maeve. He dodged Queen Maeve's next punch and started to fight back. Homelander was truly ruthless. He gouged out Queen Maeve's eye with his fingers. Queen Maeve didn't hold back either, landing a punch to Homelander's groin. She was about to press her advantage but was sent flying by a direct punch from Homelander. Billy wasn't faring much better. In terms of combat skills, he was clearly no match for Soldier Boy. So he resorted to a dirty trick, attacking Soldier Boy's lower body. Taking the opportunity, he grabbed Soldier Boy's neck and fired a laser beam, but Soldier Boy wasn't easily defeated. The laser only mildly burned his skin. He quickly took down Billy and threw him like a ragdoll, making Billy see stars. Soldier Boy picked up his shield to deliver a fatal blow to Billy. At the crucial moment, Soldier Boy's attack was interrupted again. It was Starlight and Imum who had arrived. But Starlight was no match for Soldier Boy and was knocked far away with a single blow. Regaining his senses, Billy attacked with his laser vision again. Soldier Boy struggled to block with his shield, but the shield gradually gave way, shattering into pieces under Billy's punch. M. M. Couldn't help but cheer, but the shield is nothing to the invincible Soldier Boy. The two engaged in close combat once more. After a few rounds, Soldier Boy gained the upper hand, his massive fists pounding Billy's face. No matter how strong Billy's defense was, he couldn't withstand Soldier Boy's assault for long, and he soon fell. At this moment, Kimiko rushed in, but without even looking, Soldier Boy grabbed the ambushing Kimiko and tossed her aside like a ragdoll. Now, all the pressure fell on Starlight. Starlight struggled to her feet, bracing herself for Soldier Boy's attack. At this moment, Huey, having just finished evacuating the crowd, saw the scene through the monitors and was instantly frantic. He immediately took out the V-24, planning to teleport over. Suddenly, he thought of a better idea. Starlight's superpower is controlling electrical energy, so Huey cranked the electricity to the maximum. Starlight's eyes emitted a blinding light. As the electrical energy gathered, her power grew stronger. Her feet lifted off the ground. Starlight, who couldn't fly, was now hovering in midair. Soldier Boy realized he couldn't let her accumulate more power and decisively struck. Starlight unleashed her full power. The terrifying energy blast pushed Soldier Boy back several meters, but that was all. As Soldier Boy got back on his feet, Starlight and Kimiko grabbed his arms. Animum seized the chance to make him inhale the neurotoxin, but they still underestimated Soldier Boy. His chest began to glow brighter and brighter. Soldier Boy was ready to take everyone down with him. Seeing Ryan unaware of the danger, Billy rushed over to shield him with his body. Meanwhile, Queen Maeve and Homelander's battle was nearing its end. She had just impaled Homelander's ear with a steel pipe when she turned and saw a scene of despair. Soldier Boy's face turned ashen, his body emitting an intimidating steam as he turned to face everyone. In the face of overwhelming power, all their efforts seemed futile. At the brink of life and death, Queen Maeve finally summoned the justice buried deep within her. With a powerful strike, she repelled Homelander, then quickly charged at Soldier Boy, grabbing him and diving out the window before the tragedy could unfold. 
Queen Maeve sacrificed her life to save thousands, it was worth it. With a violent explosion, a tragic mushroom cloud blossomed in the New York sky. The survivors checked each other's injuries. Fortunately, they were all relatively unharmed. But Ryan remained silent in the face of Billy's concern. It turned out Homelander had somehow positioned himself behind Billy, his face filled with anger. Ryan knew that only he could calm his father's rage now. In a pleading tone, he asked Homelander to take him away. It was at this moment that Billy realized what was truly important to him. In the end, Homelander took Ryan and left. But just then, Billy's nose started to bleed black blood, and he collapsed. When Billy woke up again, he was in the hospital, and the doctor told Billy he only had a few months to live. Hearing this, Billy calmly lit a cigarette, as if he had expected this outcome. At that moment, the news on the television was replaying the story of Queen Maeve's heroic death. In reality, Queen Maeve hadn't died, she had simply become an ordinary person and was taken away by M.M. and Kimiko. Ashley watched the video and let out a relieved smile before deleting it. Colonel Grace kept a close watch on the sleeping soldier boy until she saw him being sealed in the containment chamber, finally allowing herself to relax. The Deep, after spending all his time with Fish, lost his wife, who had been advising him. He still didn't understand what he did wrong. Starlight took off her battle dress because she realized that the uniform never gave her any power, and that true strength came from her heart. However, if Starlight wanted to join the boys, she first had to get past M.M.'s cleanliness obsession. Starlight retorted, Would you dare demand the same from Billy? Frenchie chimed in, saying Billy should have been kicked out a long time ago. From now on, it would be a democracy. No sooner had he finished speaking than Billy appeared at the door. Sipping on a Homelander-branded drink, it seemed their democratic plan would have to wait a few more months. Just then, the news on the television caught everyone's attention. Due to the unfortunate drowning of presidential candidate Bishop, the new president would be head popper Victoria. Now the boys had a new mission. It's definitely gonna go. A breaking news segment interrupted, showing Soldier Boy's statue collapsing, causing chaos at the scene. The perpetrators were supporters of Stormfront and Homelander, threatening to kill Starlight. Homelander descended from the sky, shamelessly enjoying the adoration of the crowd. He proudly introduced Ryan to them, earning applause. But someone in the crowd hurled insults and threw a soda at Ryan. Homelander lost his temper and killed the heckler with a single glance. The crowd fell silent. Homelander regretted his outburst. Unexpectedly, a man in the crowd cheered loudly, and soon everyone began to chant blindly, saying this was the Homelander they loved. Homelander beamed with joy, and an intriguing smile appeared on Ryan's face. 